Hello everybody, welcome back. Today we're doing another strengths and materials problem. And today this problem is going to be dealing with a new concept uh, of stress. We're going to be looking at the analysis of stresses and the different types that act inside of a structural member. Okay, So this is generally a transition period for most strengths and materials courses uh, since we're now diving into the analysis of the strength of materials. What does this mean? Well, we previously remember that in our previous problems, we were able to use equilibrium equations to determine forces exerted onto our structural elements. So members, pins, support reactions, and things like that. Now we need to determine the effects of the forces on the structural elements. So what does that mean? It means, will these elements be able to withstand the external forces loaded onto its members, okay? Once that's known, we can then look even further to optimize the amount of material and the types of material that are used in construction to withstand the forces uh, being applied without compromising the structural integrity. So that's kind of the whole point of this, uh, of this topic here and the topics that you'll see in the future. So for this reason, it's good to kind of slow down and take a step back and really try to understand what these concepts are. And the first of which is going to be the analysis of stress. So what is stress? An example uh, that we think of would be studying last minute for a midterm. Um, but in our course, it's going to refer to something a little bit different. It's actually going to be the intensity of force. In other terms, it's actually defined as the distribution of force over an area. So let's imagine this cylinder. Let's look back at our diagram here. And we have a solid cylinder, a cheese string, if you will, uh, and a force applied at both ends perpendicular to that cross section, right down the center as well. Uh, we can take a cut at the cylinder in order to analyze the distribution of force that is developed based on these external forces. And this distribution will be known as our normal stress, also represented by sigma average. And formulaically, we have F over A, where F is going to be the magnitude of the internal forces, and A is going to be the area which it is distributed. And for normal stress, we know that the force or the stress is going to be perpendicular to our cross section. Okay. Now we also look at our formula and we see that we have average here. So what that average means is simply saying this stress is going to have a constant value throughout the entire cross sectional area based on this force being loaded right down the centroidal axis of the cylinder in our case. But later on, we'll see that depending on the location of the force acting in the cross section, the assumption that normal stress will have an average value throughout will not hold. But for now, we'll keep things simple and hold that assumption that normal stress and shear stress will be uniformly distributed. Now, normal stress also relates to a concept known as bearing stress. Uh, which is simply a normal stress resulting from the contact of two bodies. Uh, so if you imagine you had a column, let's say, a cylindrical column, and it was resting on a plate, that contact area down here is going to create a stress between the member and the base, okay? So that's pretty much what that means, and we'll see in this example uh, how similar they are uh, concept-wise. There is also the concept of shear stress that we need to cover, which will come in our next video. However, shear is a very similar thing to what normal stress is. However, now we have the force F representing the magnitude of internal forces acting parallel to the cross section rather than perpendicular for normal stress, okay? So we're gonna have that parallel to cross section. And it's the same form formula where it's gonna be F over A, okay? And this symbol is going to be tau. All right, so now that we have all the concepts covered for normal stress, we can hop into our first normal stress problem and give it a quick read. So pretty much we have three steel bars with 25 by 15 mil cross sections that are welded to a gusset plate. Uh, determine the normal stresses in the bars when the forces shown are being applied to the plate. So pretty much this problem is just asking us to look at each of these three rods individually and pretty much see what stresses are created in each of them. So we have the formulas here. And we know that we have units in force over area. And generally, when working in stress, we work in terms of pascals, which are going to be newtons per meter squared. And depending on the magnitude or the number and value that you calculate for each of your stresses, 
you can convert the value into megapascals or gigapascals. So if you had 10 to the 6 regular pascals, you can convert that to 1 megapascal. Vice versa, if you had 10 to the 9 pascals, you can convert that to 1 gigapascal. Okay. So generally, a good practice is to work in pascals at first. So work in newtons per meter. And then you can convert after to a more uh, appropriate unit. So let's look at our first problem, uh, which is going to be this rod A. All right, so now we can see our cross-section more clearly with a 25 by 15 mil dimension for this rectangular face and a 40 kilonewton force applied directly to the center of that cross-section's face. So to calculate the normal force for A, it's going to be following that same formula, which is F over A. And we're going to be working with a 40 kilonewton force on top multiplied by 10 to the 3 to put this into newtons. And then on the bottom, to get that in meters squared, we're going to convert these millimeter units into meters. So that's going to be 0 0.025 multiplied by 0 0.015. And that's going to give us meters squared. Calculating this value, it's going to leave us with a number 106.6 .6 times 10 to the power of 6 newtons per meter squared. And that is in pascals, right? However, we remember that we, when we have 10 to the 6, we can actually convert this to megapascals. So this is actually equivalent to 106.6 .6 megapascals. And if you also want, you can represent that this member will be in tension because we are pulling away from that gusset plate, okay? Now, similarly, we can do the same for members B and members C. And we're just following the same rules that we did before, where we're going to have 50 on top for this member B, multiply by 10 to the 3 to get that into newtons. And then on the bottom, it's going to be that same cross-sectional area that we had before, which is 0 0.025 times 0 0.015 for meters squared. Calculating B, we are going to be left with a stress of 133.3 megapascals also in tension. And then we have a similar thing for member C, except instead of 50 this time, it's going to be 20. And we have the same area on the bottom. And this will leave us with a final answer of 53.3 megapascals for C. So those are your final answers for this problem. And it's a very basic intro problem to understand what normal stresses are. In our next video, we're going to be looking at shear stress and how it differs from what normal stress is, okay? So I hope this video helped, guys.